Hello there and welcome back to Utility Sports. If you do enjoy MLB content, this is the place to subscribe. We cover a lot of MLB content throughout the entire year, transactions, the MLB draft, and also stuff that's going on within the season. So make sure you are subscribed to our channel if you do enjoy that kind of stuff. We are going to get into the video. It is a mock draft. This is the newest rendition for Utility Sports. And let's just jump right into it. Number one is going to be Jack Leiter from Vanderbilt. A uh, really, really strong right-handed arm. Uh, he, he's definitely a guy that has shown a little more polish than his teammate, uh, Kumar Rocker. But I think that this is the best pick for the Pirates. They need that true ace in their rotation. And I think he could come up fairly quickly. I think he might only need one year, two years in the minors. But I think this team needs a front-of-the-line rotation guy. And Leiter provides that to him. His best pitch, arguably, is his curveball. Elite, elite curveball from him. So I really like the selection for the Pittsburgh Pirates. I think that ultimately this is the move that they need to make to, you know, gear back towards contention. Number two, we have a little bit of a mix up from our last mock draft, Marcelo Mayer from East Lake high school. This is definitely a kid that has shown some polish. He can really hit the ball. Definitely a guy that can hit to all fields. He has shown some interesting power. And I also think that he is good enough defensively to stay at that shortstop position for the Rangers they obviously have Josh Jung. Um, there, there's a lot to really like about this team. Sam Huff is also another prospect they have coming at the catcher spot. So there is some some pieces in place, but they do need a shortstop of the future. Um, but, you know, that's going to be kind of interesting with Isaiah kiner falefa Do you move him back to third then and let uh, Mayer stick there? Or do you make a decision with Mayer and let him play second base? So there's a lot of different things. Obviously, Nick Solak's there. So you might have to do a little bit of rotations, but I think getting a nice power bat in this lineup could be very, very interesting for the Texas Rangers. So overall, I just like the fit of this team. You're going to have to make some adjustments in the infield, but you want to take arguably one of the better players available, obviously, at number two. But I think Mayer fits in nicely. They need a, a guy that could be a potential you know, big-time threat with power. Um, Joey Gallo won't be there for very long. I think he is going to get traded. So getting a middle of the order bat like Mayer makes some sense for the Rangers. At number three, we have Jordan Lawler from Dallas J. Sue High School. For the uh, Detroit Tigers, I think it definitely makes sense for them to look at that shortstop spot. They've been really, really building pitching in the draft and, and through trades. So it would be interesting for them to get a true five-tool prospect in Lawler. I think he has a lot of upside in that regard. This is an exciting kid. He has all of the tools, definitely has the speed, the power, um, can hit for average as well. There, there's so much to like about him as a prospect. He could be arguably the best player in this draft. You're banking on some upside and potential, but he very well has all the tools to be the best player from this class, especially of the fielders. Um, it, it was very tough between Mayer and Lawler, but I ultimately went with a little more polish like the Rangers like with Mayer. So that's ultimately why I did that. I think Lawler has a little bit more to go in terms of progression, but we've seen like from the Rangers last year with Justin Foscue, they are looking to take one of the more established players. And that ultimately might lead them to take a college player. We don't know, but going back to Lawler, I think this is a good fit with the Detroit Tigers. They need to continue to build up their lineup. So getting Lawler high upside prospect. I love this for Detroit. At number four, we have Henry Davis from Louisville. And Davis is one of the most polished college hitters of the entire class itself. Really, really good bat, good bat speed. There's a lot to like about him. He's got a plus arm behind the plate as well. This is a big, big pickup for the Boston Red Sox who are looking for that franchise catcher. I think this makes a lot of sense for this team moving forward. Also a guy that you can truly rely on hitting. They love to take guys that are consistent with the bat. He can provide some power. He can also hit for some average at the next level as well. The next pick, we have Brady House from Winterboro High School. This is a guy that offers some upside in terms of some of his traits. Definitely going to be a guy that can hit for some power at the next level. Also, um, he can run pretty well overall, but I think the power could be detri or could be really, really huge for the Baltimore Orioles. Looking once again to have a guy with Ad Adley Rushman. They have Cedric Mullins in place. Then you go ahead and draft a guy like Brady House could be that shortstop of the future good enough defensively to stick there probably at the next level. So, I mean, you, you could also potentially look at moving him to third. I think he can be good enough to stick at shortstop though. 
At number six here, we have the Arizona Diamondbacks. We have them selecting Colton Kowser. He's got a nice 6'3 frame, a guy that can once again hit to all fields. He has shown some power potential at Sam Houston State, one of the more um, polished hitters in the class as well. I think for the Arizona Diamondbacks looking to ultimately replace some of the guys that they're going to have to trade. I think this is going to be a trade deadline where they sell a ton of their assets and pieces. Um, we could see Peralta on the way out, Eduardo Escobar as well. So they're going to have to kind of replace some of that hitting that they are going to lose it. You know, in, in the short term, it's not going to be great for them because they're going to kind of tank a little bit, but uh, in, in the end, they are building a minor league system. That's very competent. And I'd like the Colton Kowser selection for them. With the next pick, we have the Kansas city Royals, Kumar rocker. Ultimately you're going with the highest potential, big power, right-handed arm, a guy that was thought to be potentially the first overall pick in this last in this class before the season had started. He's had some inconsistencies, but maybe Kansas City can capitalize on this and go ahead and you know continue to build their rotation. They're doing a really nice job holistically with filling out this minor league system. They're getting closer and closer. Um, this is a team to watch for sure moving forward. They've done a really nice job establishing all areas of their team. Um, I, I think Kumar Rocker, huge for the Kansas City Royals. At number eight, we have the guy that will have to replace Trevor Story. I think it's inevitable that Trevor Story will not be a Rocky, you know, in, in the next couple of years. I think it's very possible that it's just next year. I, I don't see the Rockies continuing to stay with them. They moved on from Arenado. Then they go ahead and select Khalil Watson, an interesting athlete, definitely a guy that has got a nice glove, a big time arm at the shortstop position. He's also very quick, very quick twitch athlete. So this is one you're kind of banking on some upside as well. I think he, he could be a plus bat. I'm not sure how much of the power is really going to be displayed, but quality glove, a, a guy that can definitely make an impact on a roster. And they are going to have to replace Trevor Story here eventually. So I think this is kind of the move that they're going to need to make to prepare for that departure. At number nine, we have the LA Angel select Jackson Job, the best prep arm in the entire class. I really like his upside as well. He's definitely, he has a nice heater. He's got a really nice slider as well. Um, one of the best sliders in the entire class. Jackson Job is going to come ready to go. The Angels definitely need some pitching. I mean, their hitting lineup is fine. I mean, they have, you know, a lot of guys that can hit for some power. Obviously you have Rendon, you have Trout and Otani, and you, you need to continue to build that rotation, which has kind of plagued them for a couple of years. Jackson Job can be that guy for them. Uh, a lot of upside here. He can throw at least 95 miles per hour right now, work on his mechanics a little bit. He could increase that overall miles per hour. At number 10, we have uh, Sal Freilich. He's a shorter guy. He's only got the 5'9 frame, but the thing about him is he's got elite bat, bat to ball contact skills. He's also a phenomenal athlete. So that's what you're really looking for for the New York Mets. I think this is a really good fit for them but definitely could be a leadoff guy in the future. Just does a really, really great job making contact, good solid contact as well. Doesn't have a ton of pop, but I know he can get on base. And I know he can steal bases and be a plus defender. I think Frelick is a, an awesome selection here at 10. At number 11, we have Sam Bachman from Miami. This is a guy that has had some issues with control, but another power right-handed arm. Washington is going to continue to try to build that rotation for the future. They have some nice offensive pieces moving forward, but they need to ensure that they do have a guy that could be at least a three in, in a rotation. I love this selection for Washington. He's had some issues with command. However, that could be kind of good just for him to drop back a little bit in the draft. I think he is definitely ready for the next level. And this is my Miami of Ohio, by the way, not, um, not the Hurricanes. So now we're moving on to number 12. We have the Seattle Mariners. Seattle presents kind of an interesting story. They started off pretty hot this year and they've kind of tapered off a little bit, but they are showing some signs of life that they can't compete. I think that's really, really crucial for them is to ensure that they have rotation moving forward. Obviously they have some top tier prospects in clinic and, and Rodriguez that will be ready to go soon, but you need to ensure that you do have some more rotational pieces for your team. Uh, Jordan Wicks is definitely a left-handed pitcher. He's arguably the, the best left-handed pitcher in the entire class. I think there's a lot to like about Jordan Wicks game. Um, definitely can't be that power, power arm for them. So Seattle goes with pitching 
And they're going to continue to build up that back half of the rotation or mid part of the rotation with Jordan Wicks. At number 13, we have the Philadelphia Phillies. Ty Madden's a guy that definitely, he put on, I think, 30 pounds worth of muscle before this upcoming or this past season or current season, I should say. Ty Madden can be one of those guys for the Phillies. You definitely have to consider Philadelphia looking at another arm. Obviously, they have Nola and Wheeler, but you want to continue to build out that rotation. That's crucial. That's where some of the teams make mistakes at the next level. <clears throat> they, they have to ensure that they have the back half of the rotation. Ty Madden can be that power arm for them. I think it presents an interesting story. He definitely could go a little higher than 13, but I think this is kind of the range where he's gonna, going to fall at. Number 14, we have Ryan Cusick from Wake Forest, definitely. Uh, San Francisco is competing. They are doing a really, really nice job. They have some nice pieces as it currently stands, but they got a little ways to go. I think it makes sense for them definitely to look at another right-handed arm for that rotation. Uh, I, I really like Cusick. I think he could be a quality starter, could be a three at the next level, maybe even a potential two, but I think three is more along the lines of where he fits into this row for the Giants. At number 15, we have Matt McClain. Uh, not a, once again, not a you know big time guy. Not he's he, I think he's only 5'10, but he can hit the ball. He had had some struggles at UCLA, you know, kind of trying to put it all together, but I think he could be a solid shortstop. Obviously, the Brewers got Adamas. I'm not sure if that is going to be a long-term thing for them or not. But McLean can be an impact player right away. I think you give him two years in the minors. I think he'll be ready to go for the Brewers. Can be that long-term shortstop for this team. Matt McLean, you know, fell a little bit in this mock, but I think he's a quality shortstop. He will be able to stick defensively there at shortstop in the future. And once again, now we're at number 16. We have the Miami Marlins. Uh, Adrian Del Castillo from the University of Miami. So this kind of works out for them, uh, being able to keep them in the area. But I definitely think that the Miami Marlins are going to be considering a catcher. The future of Jorge Alfaro is uncertain. Obviously, they got him in the JT Real Muto trade to ultimately try to replace Real Muto. But he's just had some injury, injury history. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they feel about him long term. I, I really like the Marlins in this one, getting Del Castillo. I think this is kind of the range where Del Casillo is going to fall is in that mid-teen area. But the Miami Marlins should be pretty happy with being able to get a catcher at 16. Now with the next pick, we have the Cincinnati Reds. And we have Bubba Chandler from uh, North Orney High School. Uh, for, for the Reds, I think it makes sense to definitely look at an arm. We don't know what Chandler is going to be, but I think he can be successful at both whatever route he chooses to go. So this offers up some versatility for the Cincinnati Reds because getting a guy that can be a pitcher or a shortstop, if you don't necessarily know what, what you want to plug and play him, you can kind of just see if he takes off at either as he progresses through the minor leagues, give him opportunities to have some at-bats and get some starts. And then you'll, you'll probably quickly figure out what he will be uh, moving forward. At number 18, we have the St. Louis Cardinals. We have Chase Petty from uh, Mainland Regional High School. For the Cardinals, they're going to continue to build that rotation. That's what they'd love to do. They want to ensure they're solid all the way through one through five. But I, I think Chase Petty slides in nicely with this team. You have some time with them. I, I think that he's a couple years down the line from being ready for the major leagues. But St. Louis is not you know, necessarily in a hurry. I think they're going to be okay kind of waiting it out and see if Petty can be a, a very, very quality starter for them. Now we move on to number 19. We have the Toronto Blue, Jay, Toronto Blue Jays. We have Michael McGreevy from UC Santa Barbara. I think he provides an interesting opportunity for uh, the Toronto Blue Jays. They have been trying to build that rotation out. I think they have the lineup and the lineup's getting really, really close to being, you know, a top 10 in the league, if not already. But um, I, I think that they want to continue to build out that rotation as well. This is definitely going to be a little pitcher heavy in this class. I think there are some really, really quality arms that you can find, you know, after 15, there are definitely some guys that make sense. But Toronto going pitching here, I think they've done a really nice job balancing out taking pitchers versus hitters as well and how they address it in trades and free agency. So I love this for the Toronto Blue Jays. Lineup's phenomenal. I believe it is top 10 already. I, I shouldn't say probably. It, it's a top 10 lineup, but a lot to like about this Toronto Blue Jay team. I think getting um, McGreevy here, good selection overall for them. 
At number 20, we have Harry Ford from North Cobb High School. Definitely a player that projects to be, he's a pretty good athlete as it currently stands. He's got a good arm. Uh, definitely, um, he's actually one of the fastest players in the entire class, which is kind of crazy considering he's a catcher as well. So good athlete, guy that, you know, has got a nice arm behind the plate. The New York Yankees could be eventually looking to replace Gary Sanchez. I'm not sure if that's the perfect marriage for them. Uh, whether it's the right move or not to move on from him, I don't know because he has shown some inconsistencies and you don't know what you're going to get out of Gary Sanchez. But Harry Ford, I love this selection for them at number 20. I think this makes a lot of sense. At number 21, we have Andrew Painter from Calvary Christian High School. I think that the Chicago Cubs are going to look to build the rotation as well. Andrew Painter, it, this is right around where he should be slotting, being that right-handed arm. Um, I, I think he has been, you know, he's been a consistent pitcher in high school. Um, I definitely think he offers some upside. I'd like this for Chicago at 21. Now at number 22, we have Spencer Schwellenbach from Nebraska. We don't know what he's going to be at the next level. He can be a shortstop. He can be a right-hand, right-handed pitcher. He will be effective at both. So I think this is kind of interesting for the White Sox, taking a chance on a guy that, you know, could be a starter, could be a shortstop. It, it really depends. I know they have Tim Anderson, but eventually he could slot at other positions as well. I think he has some versatility in that regard. I mean, maybe he's primarily going to be a hitter. Maybe he'll be a, a right-handed pitcher, but they're just looking for a guy with some versatility here at number 22. At 23, we have Benny Montgomery from Redland High School. I think Benny definitely could slot in nicely for the Indians. He's going to take some time in the minors, um, really work on his bat, a little, little bit of work in the field as well. But I think for the Indians, you have to make sure that you are taking care of your, your hitters because this team knows how to develop pitching. I think they're right along the path of where they need to go for their starters and their relievers. But you just need to ensure that you have some more offensive firepower. Benny Montgomery in the future can provide that for them. Now at 24, we have the Atlanta Braves. Atlanta is kind of an interesting thing because they have a very, very deep rotation. They also have deep lineup as well. Maybe they could look for another rotational, another piece in the bullpen, but I have to have them take Will Taylor, who's arguably the best player still available, high school prospect. Um, kind of interesting for the Braves. There, there's times where they're not afraid to take the best player available. I think that is what Will Taylor will be at this point in the draft. So Atlanta just going with arguably the best player available. I think that this is the smart move for them because they've done a really nice job holistically building out their roster. At number 25, we have the Oakland Athletics. I have Ethan Wilson going from South Alabama of James Wood IMG Academy. Uh, this definitely makes some sense for them, uh, for the Oakland A's, because they have some patience. They're ready to you know, draft, a, draft a kid out of high school. We've seen them do it before. They are not afraid to take a prep guy, take a chance on a prep guy. And I think they're looking for some upside here. Uh, I, think, I think Ethan Wilson can provide uh, a nice corner outfield spot for them. I, I think that the Oakland A's moving forward should consider taking more outfield. Uh, I mean, maybe they can look middle of the infield too, but I, I think both are, are fine. He's got a couple of years to go till he's ready anyways. And now we have number 26. We have the Minnesota Twins. We have Ethan Wilson from South Alabama. Ethan Wilson, definitely a guy that can contribute right away. Pretty polished prospect as it is. So you're just taking a very, very solid guy right, right off the bat here. If you're the Minnesota Twins, you're getting close. But the problem now with the Minnesota Twins is you have a conundrum on your hand. I think there will be some trades made, whether it's Byron Buxton being traded, whether it's him maybe re-signing and then Max Kepler's gone. Uh, maybe Kirilov ends up moving to first base after a snowed possible trade. There's a lot of different things that can happen with the Minnesota Twins. You're just taking you know, arguably the most polished prospect that remains in the class in Ethan Wilson. I think this is a good fit for them because there will be some changes. They also need some starting pitching as well. That is the route that they could go here uh, in addition, but I, I kind of like the fit potentially of Ethan Wilson. They have Trevor Larnick as well, who they do like, who was a first round pick for them. So a lot of different avenues, maybe they go pitcher, maybe they go out, outfielder, but at this point, I'm going to have them go with a polished hitting prospect. At 27, we have the San Diego Padres. We have Gunnar Hoagland, who he's got a long ways to go. I mean, he had Tommy John surgery. I think this is going to be a project piece for the Padres, but they're not really you know, in a huge rush to have a rookie make an impact because they have a very, very good, talented lineup as it is. 
So Gunnar Hoagland, definitely going to be a project for them. They got to make sure, you know, he's able to get healthy. And I think San Diego can't afford to, to wait on him in the draft. At 28, we have Will Bedner from Mississippi State. The Tampa Bay Rays love drafting pitching and developing pitching. You would think maybe they would go with a, a hitting prospect, but they have the deepest minor league system in all of baseball as it currently stands. They love to draft pitchers. I think Will Bedner is a good fit for the Tampa Bay Rays. And I think they definitely could unlock him as a starting pitcher or potentially a guy out of the bullpen. And then finally here at 29, we have the LA Dodgers. We have Jaden Hill, which he had some inconsistencies at LSU, but he's really kind of put it together now finally. And I think the Dodgers could definitely look at using him as a bullpen guy at some point. I think that's maybe where he's best projected to, to go. You can try him as a starter, but I think once it's said and done, I think he makes more sense as a reliever uh, anyway, but he could be a very, very talented reliever. He's got some really great stuff throws hard and definitely has some nasty wipeout pitches that can translate at the next level. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I had a lot of fun doing this mock draft. Please subscribe. If you are new to the channel, also leave a like, if you did enjoy the content that you've seen today, we're really excited to provide more mock drafts for you in the upcoming future. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.